This clock is a mongrelization of Clayton Boyer's epicyclic design. I always thought that Clayton's original design was a bit too large, so I thought I'd be smart and I halved the plan. And as you can see, while I was about it, I redesigned the frame to look like a frog. The frog has all those yummy bugs flying around in front of its face. While I halved the size, I left the depth the same. I'd bought two springs when I first decided to build the epicyclic, so I've used the second spring on this. It's actually a bit too strong, but that's what I had. Following the theme, I've used a frog as the pendulum. You'll notice that halving stuff isn't always a good idea. I've had to make cutouts in the frame for the escape wheel to fit. And you can see from the size of my fingers how small the escape wheel and the escape itself is. It's a real bugger to get it adjusted right so that it beats in time. You've only got to be a fraction of a poof deenth out one way or the other and then the clock stops. If you're really good you'll see that I've even got a frog on the counterweight on the planetary arm. I had to make the planetary arm out of two quarter inch pieces of ply laminated together because the force of the spring was uh, twisting the whole thing. Had a few other challenges as well like relocating the spring storage pulley. Also relocated the winder um, away from the pendulum a bit so that uh, I could wind without him hitting the pendulum. So here's the epicyclic frog and here's the original design. Epicyclic in its full size. Certainly a lot easier to build in that size. I don't think I'll be building another small one. Here's another look at the escape wheel from the front. and the six pin wheel that comes off it and the little bugs with the numbers on. All in all this project was a bit of a pain to build it really was a bit too small for the design. Of course it always could be that I'm just not good enough. Nah, can't be that. Anyway, it's turned out well and it looks quite neat. <laughs>